in Jesus name are you ready for tonight please pray in one minute Lord I am ready for your word let it come to bless let it come to change let it come to transform now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Bible says and we all with unveiled face we behold as in a mirror the glory of God and then the Bible says we are changed we're transformed from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of God it says they grow from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion hallelujah praise the Lord tonight's teaching is a very powerful one and I believe that this will be a very strong spiritual arsenal that you will want to add to the many arsenals that God has granted us access to here. Remember that our victory in this kingdom within the time and the dispensation that we have to serve the purposes of God is predicated upon the sufficiency of our equipping hallelujah that means that we must sustain the ability to access every spiritual arsenal within our disposal because our lifetime will necessitate one or more of these arsenals and so every time we come before god we must listen for a dimension of truth that will be given to us that will be useful for our destinies hallelujah it's amazing that we're already in november i was thinking about it today and i said can you imagine truly how time flies this is november 2019 january this year and every year is about the most motivated year uh, or motivated months for many people they are inspired challenged pressed to do a lot of things and many times by the time we get to september october november most people are already gassing out and um so the lord inspired a very powerful teaching in my heart that i believe will bless us in no small way in the name of jesus christ tonight i want to teach on the concept of strength um, it is very powerful what I want to share because these are the kinds of teachings that are applicable to all and sundry these are the teachings that we will need for the now and also in the future um, the goal is to open us up to a very thorough understanding of strength and the role that it plays in a believer's life in his accomplishing the purposes of God the Bible very clearly reveals scattered through scripture that strength is the fuel of destiny please listen very carefully the Bible reveals again and again that when people get to the end of their destinies it is proof that they accessed sufficient strength hallelujah praise the lord it is a very important thing ephesians chapter 3 please verse 16 the whole text runs to 21 but we'll just pick one scripture one verse 16 ephesians 3 please help us paul is praying and speaking to the church in ephesus and he said that he would grant you paul is asking the lord to grant unto the church according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man it's a very powerful prayer the apostle is praying for a people who would later go through all kinds of things the the oppression that would come from emperor nero and others who would come and attack the gospel he was praying for a people who some of them would be martyred in their lives 
he was praying for people who sometimes would lose their lives for the gospel and he said listen i pray that you be strengthened not in your arm in your inner man by the spirit and so we need a lot of strength for the journey of destiny proverbs chapter 21 please proverbs chapter 21 continues to emphasize the need for strength in a believer's journey 21 proverbs 24 i beg your pardon verse 10 proverbs 24 verse 10 it says if thou faint in the day of adversity the diagnosis is that what your strength is small modern cars very modern cars are so equipped that when the fuel is getting to reserve certain features that use the fuel will minimize or stop working is that true the ac may be minimized the capacity as proof that the fuel is going down and when you refill it again you find out that all of those futures are back it's a system of conserving what is left so that the car will not die and the bible says if you faint in the day of adversity thy strength is small the first revelation i want you to get is that among the many days in a man's life there is a day called the day of adversity jesus said this is your hour and the power of darkness it's a message to strengthen the body of christ because for many people our lives and our experiences have not been exactly the best in the midst of all the joy and the celebration there are people right now who have been bereaved there are people right now who um have lost jobs have lost opportunities i got a text um i think this afternoon or so while i was praying about a family who had been praying for a dead corpse for a few days still believing that that dead body will come back to life now it's very difficult to teach these kinds of things because believers um it is not in in our normal human um it is not a normal desire to want to admit that days like this are part of the days in a man's life it is difficult for you to think that a day can come when you will stand before a corpse of your loved one it is difficult for you to think that one day you will stand and watch your eviction letter from a landlord everybody wants to be positive everybody wants to move forward it is difficult for you to stand and then get a doctor's report that you thought your wife was pregnant and she wasn't pregnant it is difficult to get a report that tells you you have cancer and the cancer is dying your kidney has failed and all of that and most believers are not mentored into the spiritual system allocated by which the saints remain strong are we blessed yes this is the reason why several people when they confront challenges in their lives when they confront things that negate their faith when their prayers and their expectations don't come to pass many are discouraged many are depressed many leave god many even die tonight's message will bless you in no small way and add it to the spiritual archives of your life because for as long as you live you will need it one day hallelujah as a man of god i've had the privilege to weep with many families who have lost their loved ones people have lost jobs people have celebrated people have done all kinds of things and sometimes it's very difficult to let believers see and sometimes we preachers especially for us that god has granted grace to walk in the miraculous and to walk in the truths of the word of god it's difficult to also create space in our teaching where we help people understand that it is not unusual when believers pass through turbulent times in their lives and their family is usually not a message that is very accepted it is not pleasant and so when the believer is now sick when the person now has an accident when something happens 
it becomes difficult to explain are we blessed if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small hallelujah psalms 46 and then verse 1 to 3 please write it down psalm 46 verse 1 and 3 look up while i read it says god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble verse 2 it says though therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed now i don't know what the psalmist was thinking in his mind <laughs> But I'm a very creative person. When I read the Bible, I take it seriously. Though the earth be removed, do you know what that means? That the earth is removed. Then we stand on what? <laughs> Are we together now? It says, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, verse 3, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, it says God is our refuge and our strength. One more scripture and then we'll discuss a few things. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Paul is speaking to the church in Philippi and this is what he says. I can do all things but he says I can only do them through the strength that Christ gives. It takes strength to do all things. It takes strength to build a house. It takes strength to build a company. It takes strength to build a marriage. It takes strength to build your spiritual life. It takes strength to go from glory to glory. And Paul is saying, I can only do all things by the strength that Christ supplies. That means outside of that strength, I may not be able to do many things that my destiny require. This is very important. These scriptures all show us that believers need strength. Everybody says strength. In fact, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, it says, but the people, the B part now, that do know their God, one of the rewards for knowing God in a believer's life is strength. Hallelujah. Strength. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. It takes a while for the word of God to prevail over a man's life, for results to begin to be produced. It takes a while for church to grow. It takes a while for the business to grow. That staying power to push and to remain until the word prevails is what many believers lack. And sadly, sometimes we preachers, in a bit to challenge and encourage people, we continue to make people feel that the moment the word of God does not work immediately, something may be wrong with your faith. So when the person cannot pay his or her rent, once the person cannot pay his or her bills, sometimes they get, um, they get into that mold that begin to suggest that they do not love God. It is not so. Strength is required. It is a finisher's requirement in this kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's discuss the concept of weariness. I studied this and it blessed me in no small way. The Bible lets us know that men can be weary. That the moment you are a mortal man on earth, the possibility of exhaustion, the possibility of discouragement, the possibility of being depressed by the vicissitudes of life is something that can always catch up with you. Are we together now? Psalm 23 from verse 1 and verse 3. The reality of weariness. Psalm 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then when you go to verse 2, it says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. The revelation is in verse 3. He restored my soul. That means the soul of a man can need restoration. The same way your body needs rest. 
a time can come you are fagged out by all the things that happen in life all men can be weary pay attention to this revelation it is a very powerful one isaiah chapter 40 popular scripture from verse 29 in fact let's start from verse 28 it says has thou not known has thou not heard 40 28 that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not neither is he weary so he's talking about weariness he says there is no searching of his understanding 29 he says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength are we together now so this scripture show that men can be weary one time jesus carrying the burden of the cross he got to gethsemane and the bible says that he prayed and the prayer was like drops of blood and then from thence he carried the cross and on his way to golgotha at a point he fell down with the cross to the point that they had to get a man called Simon of Cyrene, the nigger, to help him leave the cross. Otherwise, he would not be able to get to Golgotha. Are we together now? Yes. Moses was weary one time and he said, Lord, I don't know the kind of people you have anointed me to lead. These people are stiff-necked people. Right now, I tell them God is saying this. They rejoice. Tomorrow, they stand before the sea and they point to me and say, Moses, you are the reason we would have eaten cucumber and, and locusts and all of that. At least it was better. Now, you are taking us to a supposed promised land. We are standing before the Red Sea. And Moses said, Lord, you know what? Please come and handle this, your people. So, men can be weary. Elijah the prophet, when a woman was pursuing him, he ran one time and hid and then he didn't know what to do with his life and the guy was tired. Jonah's own was even a disturbing situation because Jonah literally, knowing that a man cannot run away from God, Jonah opted to run. And Jonah's running was legitimate. Why was it legitimate? He said, God, I know you are a merciful God. After these wicked people finish punishing me, I now go and preach. They will fast, they will repent, and you will act. You are wasting my time so that I will become the scapegoat. And Jonah was on his way. He now entered a boat, caused trouble in the boat, and the people casted lots, and they said, you know what? We are going to throw this man out. And then right he goes to the belly of the fish. Men can be weary. Elijah was receiving supernatural supplies at Bukcheri. One day the Bible says the brook dried. Hmm. The brook dried. So the reality of the weariness of men is something that we must get used to it. Listen, believers can be exhausted. Know this and let it be factored in your Christian experience as you walk with God. That it is not unspiritual to get to a point in your life where you become exhausted you can be exhausted over your children's school fees a parent one day can look at his child and say ah, why, why did these children how did i even allow these children come and sometimes you feel guilty and you feel bad it is the reality of weariness are we together now yes house rent they slash your salary by half they increase your salary by they increase your house rent by double and you stand before your landlord and you don't know what to tell him what sermon do i now preach to this man my brothers and my sisters let me tell you this when believers become weary we must sustain the intelligence on how to navigate you are a man of god you are anointed but nobody is placing a demand on your grace hmm. You go to a crusade and finish preaching, you make an altar call after three hours of preaching and only two people stroll out. As though they are pitying you. They just stroll out and stand and you ask them to pray the salvation prayer, they don't even pray it. And you stand there, Lord, did you call me or what, what is, if you didn't call me, just tell me, I will politely look for something else to do. Men can be very, very weary. I remember one time, a particular gentleman was preparing for his his marriage and um, 
you know, God will make a way, pushing things. And then a point got, it became Kai. Apostle, I said, just, just push forward, there is grace. I mean, the finisher's anointing is a possibility in the kingdom. <laughs> but honestly speaking, he got to a point where it was about one week to the wedding. And uh, the bills were a mountain that were refusing to move. And everybody can prophesy and say, I saw your wedding happening already. But it's true in the realm of the spirit. But now the possibilities to make it happen in the physical realm didn't seem to be there. And up until four or so days, I remember having to call the gentleman and to encourage him and to say, look, don't worry. God is faithful. There is God that sits in the heavens. Many years ago, another gentleman was preparing for his marriage and three days to the wedding, he refused to go to the city where he would get married. Yes. I mean, he just had to just, Lord, I don't know what you would do with me, but it's three days to my marriage, there are bills. House rent. I've seen it squash people. Ministry. When you have a crowd of people, 5,000, 10,000, and then everything begins to go down, and you can barely have 500 what happens when these kinds of seasons come in your life praise the lord so weariness is a reality with all men and this is why we need strength now i have identified from scripture two major causes of weariness please pay attention there are two major causes that can make believers any individual to be wary number one according to scripture is hope deferred proverbs chapter 13 please and verse 12 give it to us media let's hurry up hope deferred the bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick but when the desire cometh, it is a tree that can minister life so one of the reasons why people can be exhausted one of the reasons why people can be um, discouraged and broken is prolonged expectation. Listen very carefully. Hope deferred can literally make the heart. The word heart there is spirit. The Bible says a man's spirit can break, not just a human body. If your body is broken, the doctor can treat it. If your soul is broken, a therapist can psychologically manage you but when your spirit is broken the bible says no man is able to bear it are we together now hope deferred results that you expect in your life do not come you expected that at age 30 you would have built a house you expected that by the time you have four children you should be financially free you expected that by the time you are 10 years in ministry you should be established and have membership when hope is deferred it can torture the heart are we blessed the number one reason why believers get worried let me tell you this we are beings of results let me use you and we desire advancement everybody say advancement this gentleman there is an instinct in him to continue to make progress that means that this year or this month next year or next month there should be progress by the time an individual is caused whether by life or whatever it is to either retrograde or stagnate it is dangerous the bible says it can do something to you that no man can bear are, are we together now yes there are people who you know reach me and send me text messages and say apostle i am tired and frustrated i've been in ministry you know when this brother was sharing his testimony i sat back there and i was just nodding my head because it is painful when you tell people the call of god is upon your life and there are no results to testify results are powerful results validate many things among them that you are operating by laws correctly among them that you are in the will of god so when results when your life is barren of results it can do something to your heart hallelujah praise the lord i once prayed with a family that were trusting god for a miracle for their child they had a child but the child had a condition that was 
a very serious thorn in the flesh for the family. Very young boy. I mean, he could go wild and even injure his siblings. Very blessed man, but that thing was just there. And I remember when I wanted to pray for them and I was encouraging them, um, I closed my eyes to pray and then I opened my eyes and I saw the man still looking at me. Now, you may laugh. It's not unbelief. It is what weariness can do to the spirit. How many of you have gone to several men of God for prayer? They've prayed and prophesied and said it is done. And then the next time, I see it here sometimes when I'm praying for people on the queue. Oh Lord, I pray that, and, and the person, you, you know, he's just looking at you and just saying, look, just finish this prayer and let me go. Lazarus had been there three days. And when Jesus came, he said, I know in the resurrection when everything is gone. You know, I've told you that I've been kept a few times in the mortuary alone to pray for dead bodies. And it's an experience that is quite interesting. Because you will stretch your faith and watch a dead body immovable, sometimes already embalmed, and you don't know what to do there. You end up thinking about your own life in that in that mortuary i mean that's the most profitable thing you can do because the body is if you tell someone stand up from a wheelchair at least he can move his leg it's just that the leg is not strong but you speak to a dead body and you are even afraid of a dead body answering <laughs> are we together if the dead body actually answers remember the door is closed for security reason blessed be God hope deferred financial expectations especially now in Africa and Nigeria my God the way this finance thing is doing people and the kinds of depression depression that someone can just stand by the road and just look at life and take a deep breath, go home, sit on a chair and die. Nothing exactly wrong, just the reality of life. Hallelujah. So we are beings of results and we are beings of progress. And the moment your life, listen, cannot attain onto certain levels of progress within an appreciable period of time, it is true that weariness can set in. The first reason, hope deferred, prolonged expectations. The second reason from scripture, why weariness sets into the lives and the destinies of people is called sorrow. Write it down, please. Sorrow. Sorrow. Are we together? What is sorrow? A feeling of deep distress. A feeling of deep distress that is caused by losses, caused by disappointments, caused by misfortune. A feeling of deep, dis deep distress caused by loss. Could be loss of a loved one. Could be loss of a job. Could be disappointment. You expected admission, like some of you probably. You expected the final year result to come out with you completely done. And now you are seeing an extra year there. Sorrow. And sorrow has symptoms. Let me list for you two or three of them. Number one is sadness. You can interpret sorrow by the sadness that is in the heart of a man. Number two, you can interpret sorrow or you can discern sorrow by depression. Human beings just become depressed. They have no inspiration to aspire at life again. Nothing is ever worth their energy or strength. Sorrow. Rise up, let's pray again. It's no use. Rise up, let's build a company again. It's no use. Rise up as the one who is now left to take care of your siblings. It's no use. 
sadness, depression, downheartedness. I have met very discouraged, uninspired people in this life. And I have been shocked and broken by their approach to life. They can be on the road passing and a car is honing. And it makes no difference to them whether they die or live. As far as they are concerned, they are dead. There are people like that. An example of such a person was Mephibosheth in the Bible. Mephibosheth had to come to terms with the reality of his being crippled. And the fact that he would never have the opportunity to make any good out of his life again. I hope you understand that in the days of Mephibosheth, there was no technology to draw inspiration from anybody. That guy was left there. So when King David sent for him, hear his response. Oh king, what do you have to do with a dog? When a man calls himself a dog, let me tell you, one of the characteristics of sorrow is you begin to name yourself what God did not call you. Life can push you down to a point where you start calling yourself what God has not called you. I am good for nothing. You can tell yourself. I cannot amount to anything. I am the worst in my family, you hear people say. I am the black sheep. No inspiration to aspire for a life that is great. People admit defeat and sit back there. And then before you know it, their lives fold. Because they do not sustain a superior revelation again. There are people who have packed up ministry. And just said, you know what? This ministry thing, I quit. It's over. I've tried there are people who have packed up businesses after failing 10 15 times they just say you know what i've done my best there are people who have given up on their children i'm sorry i can't pay your school fees i can't take care of you do whatever you want to do with your life sorrow is a very serious thing i've had the opportunity to comfort families that have lost loved ones and sometimes no matter what you are saying the mother or the father is just looking at you they want to believe what you are saying they hope one day they will believe it but for that moment they don't are we together yes i think the admission list just came out or so for i think abu or i don't know which of the institutions and there were people who probably didn't get admission in the list that was released and some of them continued i i read some of their text messages and honestly tears were almost coming to my eyes because some of them said apostle 11 years apostle seven years apostle this one this one sorrow is a reason why weariness can eat a man like a cancer and you become a shadow of yourself because you are sorrowful. So hope deferred and sorrow are two biblical causes of the weariness in men. No wonder our world today is filled with depressed men. Medical people will tell you the volumes of drugs that are consumed especially by men do you know why because the inability to be able to provide the inability to be able to be there sometimes can so discourage the man he stands and says well i know i'm good for nothing i know i'm not able to take care of my wife and family and because of that they draw conclusions and like mephibosheth even when the king is calling they say don't call a dog call men I am a dog. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve. Serve you with my life. Serve you with my worship. You made me to see that your right hand but I choose to bow, bow in worship, bow in worship. 
You made me royalty, but I choose to serve, to serve you with my life, to serve you in worship. You made me to sit at your right hand, but I choose to bow, to bow in worship, bow in worship. There are times that you're reducing yourself is to honor God, but there are times that reducing yourself is because life has made you so. Life has beaten you to a point where you do not see that you can stand again. There are times when you are a king, but you put your golden crown so that you will worship. But there are times it is not worship. It is just life that has hit you down. There are times you go on your knees because you are worshiping God. But there are times you go on your knees because you do not see any hope in life again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve, to serve you with my life, to serve you in worship. You made me to sit at your right hand, but I choose to bow, but I choose to bow. Bow my heart. I will never forget many years ago when one of our precious ones in this ministry went to be with the Lord. She was a leader, served God with all her heart, loved God. She was so dear to me, I loved her with my whole heart. And she quickly just went to do something and returned back. And I remember I was counseling someone. When a call comes to me, and then my attention is needed. And then they break the news that this is my most precious, precious daughter has transited to go to be with the Lord. I remember how I thought about it and I said, oh boy. I remember when God granted me the privilege to visit with the family and I held the mother and the mother began to sing and the mother began to encourage us and the mother began to rejoice. I said stamina, that's what it's called. You know a man's level of spiritual dexterity, not when things are happening. But sometimes it's when nothing is happening. Do you have the staying power when the word of the Lord is yet to come through in your life? Do you have the staying power when the church has not opened up? Do you have the staying power when you are fasting and praying and the anointing does not seem to come upon your head? You watch all your colleagues and contemporaries already walking in certain dimensions, but for you, it is not there. You watch all your colleagues with jobs, some of them becoming managers, and here you are, after 15, 17 years, you are still looking for a job. Weariness, sorrow can set in. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. Let me teach you very quickly before we pray how to be strengthened in this kingdom. I show you keys that you will hold and your life will remain an unending wonder. I show you keys that you will hold and you will defeat life and beat it at its game. Hmm. How to be strengthened. Number one. The first key to draw strength in this kingdom is the revelation of the love of God. Write it down. The first key that is allocated by which we draw strength from in this kingdom is the revelation of the love of God. 
first john chapter 3 and verse 1 we'll look at a few scriptures very quickly first john chapter 3 and verse 1 behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of god therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not behold what manner of love let me tell you something the revelation of the love of god is therapeutic is a wonder that when you stand and look at life and the awareness that the monarch of the universe has invested his love upon you is a revelation that if understood can change your life hallelujah people have received calls from presidents people have received calls from diplomats i've had a few calls in my life from great people prominent people and i can tell the excitement in my heart wow this person that person was able to reach out to me i mean it, it's very comforting and blessing when the great reach out to you it does something that is comforting and healing and then the monarch of the universe looks down on you no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me it's a revelation you must have there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me is found in Jeremiah 31 and verse 3 powerful revelation in a world of wickedness in a world of selfishness in a world that is governed by interest it is a revelation to know Jeremiah what did I say chapter please search for me I hope we got it right I have loved thee with an everlasting love that's right therefore with loving kindness have i drawn thee it's a revelation after the grace this my adorable children will be here lined up to give me a wonderful hug and how i've so missed them and every time i hug every one of these children i look at their eyes and i see the confidence they have in fatherhood this is what the Bible is saying. I have loved thee. Do you know what it means to have an everlasting love? I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Ha! Huh. This is the God of heaven. Believers, hear me. You will draw strength for the journey, for your ministry, for your life, for your children. When you understand this, it is true. Would you dance with me, your lover, of my soul, to the song of all songs? Preacher, hear me. Businessman, hear me. Dance with me. Of my soul to the song of all songs. 
powerful revelation. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 that eyes have not seen. Koinonia, hear me. God is comforting someone. Yes, have not heard. Neither has it been revealed to the heart of any man what God has in store for them that love him. There is a dealing with God that is in the realm of lovers. That God loves you so much he can sit down and think about you and plan something for your life that will make you a wonder and a shock. Please do not forget that when it comes to the sovereignty of God, God is not a man. It's a revelation I want you to hear. God is not limited by the limitations of men. Men are limited in knowledge. Men are limited in time. Men are limited in strength. But there is one who is called the monarch of the universe. And that when he decides to stand up and bless you and lift you, he will supply the strength and he will lift you the same way you press a button and a lift begins to rise. Is someone being edified tonight? The revelation of the love of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 says, For we know we are privy to an information in the, in the kingdom. We know that all things, not some things, all things work together. Please hear me. You lost a loved one. I know it is painful, but hear me. You lost money. You lost business. Your expectations disappointed. Let me tell you, we know. They may not know, but we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the call. Everything in a man's life is navigated by the love of God to square up to purpose and destiny. This is the wonder of the love of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Moses ran away from the Egyptians and he went to the backside of the mountain thinking he was running away from Egypt he did not know he was running to the place of encounter where he will meet the burning bush hmm. very powerful it's amazing how God navigates men through the path of destiny it's amazing how many times you don't even know you are led yet you are led in the midst of your confusion the finger of the ancient of days is upon you in the midst of your cluelessness about life yet he is guiding you by his spirit and then when you see the wonder of his intelligence you will stand back and join people and say you are truly the monarch of the universe i have seen this with my life this is how koinonia started i have seen this at different seasons of my life let me tell you something do not stand the way of the wisdom of god over a man that he loves do not stand the way of the wisdom of god the intelligence of god is so thorough he ensures that you win the love of god everybody say the love of god let it be a revelation that is in your heart don't give room and allow the devil to take advantage of your life and spy upon your liberty. No. Stand in the strength of the revelation of the love of God. For we know. Look at this. One day you will need this scripture sooner or later. For we know. Man of God, hear me. For we know. Businessman. Father. For we know. Apostle, I lost my father and my mother this year. I know it is painful. It doesn't make sense. But watch the intelligence of the one who designed the heavens and the earth. Listen, anytime your life looks clueless, tell yourself, keep watching. I've never had the opportunity to be, okay, well, I had once. I'm confessing now. Once in a drama group when I was in primary school. So fortunate I acted a rich man. I will never tell you the name. I know how bad you people are. You will not forget the name when I say it. They called me a wonderful name. They gave me pieces of paper and leaves. I was a politician in that drama. I would spray money and people would clap for me and so on and so forth. That was the only time I remember. Okay, well, and then a few other Christmas dramas here and there. 
But there's something I know about acting. That there is someone called a movie director. The movie director is the one invested with the intelligence of producing that movie. Sometimes the actors do not even understand the stretch. They just know that in that movie, you are acting. You, you will die. <laughs> in Jesus' name, Sam is refusing. <laughs> you, you will not die in Jesus' name. Are we together now? Yes. Do you know what it means to be mindful of a man? That means you sit down and invest your thought. To understand this, you must understand architecture. While you are talking to an architect, he's thinking, okay, so what do you want? I want a house. Let me prophesy someone's house already. I want... Yeah, sit down, sit down. Canal people. We are dealing with serious issues this night. Are we together? And you are telling the architect, okay, I need it a duplex. I need three parlors, one for business, one for family, one for this. I need a kitchen as large as a living room. I need this. And while you are describing it, the architect, watch this. The architect is intelligently, he's, he's adding imagery to what you are saying. And even things you want that you don't know, by reason of his experience, he now, he's, he's, he's filtering your amateur communication and he's adding his intelligence on it. This is what this guy meant to say. While you are talking, your heart too is talking and he's listening to both of them and capturing them in the design of that house. When he's done and he brings you and you stand, you say, if I were to draw it, it would not look like this. Beauty glory elegance this is what the bible means that when god sits down in designing your destiny he designs it thoroughly with his intelligence he designs it in such a way that insists that you arrive have you seen architects design buildings and later on they find out that ah this soil the topography is not conducive and they say no problem they have to make adjustments but that building must come out I'm speaking to someone in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The blueprint and the design for your destiny, it must be actualized in your lifetime. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Please sit down, sit down. Every building does not look like it till it's finished. Every preacher does not look like it till God is done with him. Every worshiper does not look like it. Everybody say the love of God. It's a powerful revelation. That God loves me. You know, I have, I think in the last, I don't know how many years now, it has become a deep revelation. Some, sometimes, I think in life, eh, as you grow in ministry, in leadership, and in age, certain truths of scripture begin to crystallize in you again. Are we getting blessed? Please settle with the love of God. Because there are some of you here, look at me. Your fathers, your mothers, your loved ones, and everybody has concluded about you. And you may not know the effect of that thing in your life until you get to a point where you just say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But the love of God. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me. Listen, listen to what you are singing. Oh, he chases me down. Fights till I'm found. Leaves the 99. That's strange. I couldn't earn it. And I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh. Overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Look what God is doing in this ministry. Look what God is doing in our lives. I continue to watch people as they grow in the spirit. I continue to watch people transit like from egg, lava, pupa, adult. From a little shrub, God is making many of us to become giants. It does not look like it, but be patient with God. 
and watch the wisdom i say it again of the ancient of days it's a name he has to himself the revelation of the love of god let's hurry up so that we can pray number two the second way to be comforted the second way to be strengthened as a believer is the comfort of scripture please write it down make sure you are writing number one is the revelation of the love of god how we are strengthened number two is the comfort of scripture romans chapter 15 and verse 4 romans 15 please and verse 4 look up please if you can and let's read together one to read for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning uh-huh that we through patience and comfort of scripture might find hope do you know what this means let me interpret this to you the meaning of this is that there is nothing new under the sun and that the bible has captured different experiences that can play in your life and has already given you a preview of how the end looks like so that by the comfort of scripture when for instance you are bereaved you may not know if tomorrow will ever come but you can open scripture and see someone who was bereaved and see how the person survived after it and you would draw strength from it it's not called scripture it's called the comfort of scripture joe was a man in the bible who is a classic example of a man going down to the lowest and rising back to the highest job in one day i'm not sure any man on earth has gone through that kind of experience in one day a man loses his daughters in one day a man loses his sons in one day a man loses his estates and his businesses in one day a man loses all of this and then before job will finish coping with the sheer stress his health is now affected boils begin to come dogs will come and lick the boils of job many saw job and said oh dear once great job and here he's sitting only with the comfort of his wife and watch this god began to make a boast of job in the heavenlies and by the time we get to chapter 42 hallelujah the bible says verse 10 that and god restored the fortunes of job suddenly people began to come from everywhere and bring gift and the bible said all of them held a bag of money and gave him let me speak to someone the concept of things being over is not real did you hear what i said there is no such thing as it is over with god god can the worst thing that can happen is death resurrection is proof that god has conquered the power of death hallelujah Please find your dream alive find your anointing alive get back and open the books that you wrote visions I will be a great worshiper I will sing to the nations men may not invite me now but in the name of Jesus I find comfort in scripture that for a long time David was in the wilderness but a day came he appeared before Saul your soul will call you for sure one day so David continue to learn how to play they may not invite you but stay until the season of appearing comes it is true apostle we've been trusting god for the fruit of the womb 10 years 15 years through the comfort of scripture god refers you to go to the patriarch father abraham and see what 25 years of endurance produce and when abraham finally held isaac they laughed and said all who here will laugh with me lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice and sing yeah, yeah. taking the 
pain and the sorrow away You've given me peace undeniable There's no need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything yeah. Psalms 119, verse 28. Please sit down. Want us to pray tonight? Psalms 119, verse 28. Please make sure you are writing these scriptures. You can comfort someone with it after service. You can minister to your family member. You can go and fast with this scripture and pray. My soul melted for heaviness. It says, strengthen thou me according to your word use your word to strengthen me i cannot pay the rent now but use your word to strengthen me use your word to strengthen me i don't know where the finances will come from use your word to strengthen me my mother has been diagnosed of an incurable disease use your word to strengthen me i just lost a job use your word to strengthen me i don't know how the future looks like the word is a strengthener it not only gives information we find hope in it are we blessed yes the comfort of scripture number three the third way that we are strengthened in this kingdom is by a direct impartation and an infusion of strength from the Lord directly God can stand up in his might and majesty and impart strength upon a man. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the spirit entered me. When he spake unto me and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. He said, stand up. And he said, I have no strength. And his spirit entered and speak upon my feet. And he stood. So God can directly impart and infuse strength. Second scripture, very quickly, let's hurry up. I want us to pray. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren. So he's talking to believers. They who are of the fold. Finally, my brethren. Be strong. Not in your bank account. No. Be strong. Not in your uncle or auntie. Be strong. Not in your pastor or prophet or apostle or teacher. Be strong. Not in your father or mother. Be strong. Not in your certificate or your gift. He said be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Amplify puts it in a very powerful way. If you can give it to us. If that is possible. Let's just look at Amplify. He said in conclusion. Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Draw strength. To draw from you again. Again. We've come to draw. Draw. Draw from you again, again. I've come to draw. I've come to draw. Draw, draw, draw from you again. Impartation, impartation, impartation. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We already read that scripture. 
is very very important you can draw strength from him second corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 second corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 please let's look at it very quickly paul was crying to the lord and asking him for help paul was weary and here was the response of the lord and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for you and here's the technology for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore i would rather glory in my infirmities paul is saying that the power of christ may rest upon me verse 10 therefore i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distresses for christ's sake for when i am weak mysteriously i am strong are we together god can impart strength upon you god can impart strength he can you can receive a surge of strength and may that happen to someone tonight that every door you have closed over your life and your destiny you will go back and say destiny let's continue from where we stopped four years ago from where we stopped five years ago let me give us the last and then we'll pray i want us to take some time to pray how are believers strengthened in this kingdom the fourth way is joy the joy of the lord nehemiah chapter 8 and verse strength neither be ye dismayed or sorry or in pity it says for the joy of the lord is not will be not was is present reality your strength neither be ye sorry for the joy of the lord don't pack up your life don't wrap up your ministry don't wrap up your business don't wrap up your endeavor for the joy of the lord is your strength philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 it says rejoice in the lord always I used to think he said always but that's not what he said always as you go rejoice all the way any road and any place you find yourself let your disposition be that of joy rejoice in the Lord always and again I repeat rejoice why because in this kingdom you see my brothers and my sisters joy is like a fetcher that is what you use to draw from the wells of salvation when you lose joy there are many things that will not come to your life in fact the bible puts it this way it says they that sow in tears it didn't say they will reap with joy he said they will reap in joy you will eat inside a kitchen so if you are not in that kitchen there's no meal you will reap in joy Psalm 67, we'll start from verse 1. Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Say amen. amen. Verse 2. That thy way may be known in the earth, thy saving health among the nations. Next verse. Let the people praise oh god let all the people praise thee yes please oh let the nations be glad and sing for joy for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth five let the people praise thee oh god let all the people praise thee uh-huh then shall the earth the increase that has always been there but has refused to come out that in praise and joy the earth shall yield her increase and God even our own God shall bless us listen to me you have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of remaining joyful 
you have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of being unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life joy all the way joy all the way you stand before the coffin with tears coming out of your eyes but you raise a song of praise and worship you go to your atm and check and your balance is 1500 naira and it looks like you've not done anything with your life you stand before your board and you see five carryovers and it looks like there's no hope of moving forward please hear me hear me hear me let life always find you in joy joy is a choice joy is a choice you can choose to walk in joy it's a choice the joy of the lord is my strength choose to walk in joy let me tell you this and this is something that gradually the continent of africa and nigeria is losing because we were one time purported to be the happiest people on earth but right now the spirit of depression is just coming round horizon you see young people looking as if they are old joyless people people who look dried like a fig tree what happened why should i rejoice look at the way my life is no sir to him that is joined to the living there is hope there is reason to be joyful are you hearing what i'm saying the bible talks about people talks about all kinds of circumstances happening and people dry up because there is no joy in the midst of them when you are joyful joy brings songs of worship when you are joyful it brings expressions of strength of hope and of peace joy is so powerful that it was used as one of the indices that verify and attest to the presence of the kingdom that when the kingdom of god is in a place meaning when his will is being done it will be characterized by the tripartite realities of righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost a state of merriment a state of excitement that is based on a revelation listen to me the revelation is i will joy in the god of my salvation there is a redeemer that is coming there is the lifter of men that is coming there is the anointer of men that is coming so although the fig tree may not blossom although there may not be olives on the vine although all of these things left and right may not seem to be manifesting the way you want you draw joy in the knowledge that there is a name that god is called the god of your salvation do you know what that means imagine a house burning and while you are looking at everything born you look at it and a time will come you will stop crying and you will start finding comfort the house was insured there is an insurance company that insured the house that means now that the house is bond it is time for your insurance to speak for you you have an agreement with them that for as long as you continue to pay your premium that when a disaster strikes they will take responsibility it is a mandate they have placed upon themselves so while you are watching your house bond you are regretting what is being bond there you suddenly draw strength there is an insurance are you getting what i'm saying now that's what it means to rejoice in the god of your salvation the god of your salvation the word savior is the hebrew word jehoshua that's where you get the word joshua from the god that saves the one who saves are you getting what i'm teaching you tonight it's very very important so you stand and then you draw strength the insurance company is coming 
And when you call on the insurance company, they come to stand and look at the building and value it. And within months, your building is back. And not only back, better. What you wanted to put in before that you could not put, now you have your chance. You wanted to put two parlors before. But the rigor of removing things, now everything is burnt. And now you have the opportunity to partition the house well and put the living room. God is speaking to someone. Joy. Please be careful. Guard your joy the same way a wealthy person protects a Rolex in a safe. Guard your joy the same way a lecturer protects his certificate. Guard your joy the same way money is guarded in a bulk room in a bank. Protect your joy by all means. Protect your joy by all means. It is your strength in this kingdom. It is your staying power. It is the guarantee that you will finish strong. Are we together? Yes. So number one, to be strengthened. The revelation of the love of God. Number two, the comfort of scripture. You see, look up please. Look up. If you are a believer, <coughs> if you are a believer and your word study life is not effective, please obtain grace from God tonight to take your word study seriously. Because when life squeezes you, it is, it is written that will come out. The word of God. Let it become your daily bread. Not one, one verse per day. No. You should grow past that. Sit down with scripture. Study it. It's like a deposit you are making. The day you stand before Goliath, there is a scripture. The day you stand before Pharaoh, there is a scripture. The day you stand before Saul, there is a scripture. The day Satan himself comes to you, there is a scripture. The word of God. And then number three, the impartation, direct impartation. I believe that God will do this to our lives even as we pray. A direct impartation of scripture. And then number four, joy. Koinonia, access this mystery of joy like a river. Listen to me. Please listen to me. Life, 24 hours already has by default programmed in it too many things to annoy you you will age yourself to death if you hand your life over to life to treat you you must define your possibilities the days that we live in now are days that joy must be a choice switch on your television and in five minutes you have had something that annoyed you you must choose to maintain your joy go to visit your child in school and you will see a teacher treating the child in a way you are waiting for your child to return with a wide result and you will see something that does not bring you encouragement hear me any other thing you base for your joy will disappoint you it must be the joy of the Lord as your strength as God comforted someone tonight the joy of the Lord choose to be happy you receive a call from home are you aware of the the kind of i mean there's no money anywhere we are going to die and you say mommy calm down why should i calm down because god is still the monarch of the universe there is always a way out two of you cannot be under pressure you choose to be under pressure or god under pressure he says the keeper of israel the keeper of the covenant not a person that means, listen, when CGC is locked, the key is with someone. If that person does not come, we're in trouble. So when we want to access a place, the keeper of the key is important. So when the Bible said the keeper of Israel, you would think he's talking about the nation. No, Israel means covenant. 
there is the keeper of the covenant of my destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of your destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of koinonia there is the keeper of the covenant of the prophecy upon your life see let me tell you this look at me satan is a roaring lion if you allow his roar scare you you will never be able to defeat the lion and cut the head and move. No, 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 no. Life will stand and claim bold face for you. You must sustain the intelligence in the spirit to say with joy will I draw. They see you bending for a long time and wonder what you are doing. And all of a sudden you draw out prosperity, speed, increase, lifting, and while you draw it out people will just stand and say what is this the joy of the lord you're the god of awesome wonders i've tasted of your power Much more than I deserve. Help me. My eyes have seen. My ears have heard. The wonders of your creation. Creation down in honor of you as we joy to the song I love. The words you speak, come on. The words you speak, the things around your treasure have lifted me. You took away the chains and cards that held me down. Listen to me it is in your lifetime you will build that house if it's in your lifetime a day will come you will not think about money again it is in your lifetime the anointing you seek one day you will no longer seek it because it's with you listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is in your lifetime that you will smile again there is a name God is called the God of Jeshuron he's called the one that rides upon the wings of the wind let God be true and let every man, let every report, medical report, let every system be a liar. Let God be true and let every ministry report be a liar. Let God be true and let every academic report be a liar. Let God be true and let every financial report be a liar. Let God be true. And every career report be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. Many years ago, I remember one day I was sitting down somewhere in the campus and I saw a plane pass. And I was looking at it. And the Lord told me that the word will take you into that plane many times I believed him the Lord spoke to me that a time will come nations will come and will drink from that which he has put upon our lives I believed him listen you have gone too far with God to turn back remember Lot's wife remember Lot's wife husband and wife remember Lot's wife CEOs businessmen remember Lot's wife men and women of God remember Lot's wife that if you turn aside in the bay of battle your strength is small you must obtain grace to fight till you win 
you must obtain grace listen obtain grace to stand and face your fears fight and win oh they say you have cancer oh they say your genotype will never change that's nonsense obtain grace from god oh they say your children will never be responsible oh they say your life is finished see let god be true i'm teaching you how to win in life you must immerse yourself because the kinds the kinds of environment that africa is brooding the kinds of environment that nigeria is brooding is pungent i say that respectfully is pungent for greatness from television to internet to everywhere there's all kinds of nonsense that jam packs your ear sometimes you need to say hey when the music fades and i simply come we must be that generation you can shut away from the noise longing just to free something that's a word that will bless your heart there are times you need to off the tv shut the laptop i'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is that what you have required it is within his power to make great and live you search much deeper within the you looking into my heart you're worshiping the one who sees into the heart of man i'm coming back to the heart of worship it's all about it's all about you It's all about please listen to what you are saying it's, it's all, all about, about you it's all about you jesus you are still going to sing this song and then we'll pray it's nine we'll pray for a few minutes listen listen when you make it about your sickness benny Hinn was and, and you know I, I follow him a lot and Benny Hinn was teaching in one of his healing sessions and he said he found out that those who receive from God are people who learn to forget about themselves the moment you are conscious about yourself the mountains magnify they looked on to him there was a brazen serpent that was lifted and they looked on to him Barus Kaliata and they were their faces were lightened illumination and god took shame and fear from their lives tonight we are going to sing that song again please take it high for me listen sometimes we need to remind ourselves and remind our generation that it is all about jesus and i the ministry is about jesus the business is about Jesus because sometimes you can be trying to make money and the devil looks at you and says you are a money monger you need to remind yourself and remind Satan that this is all about Jesus there are times listen to me that you will look at your children and sometimes you will put your ego on the line and he reminds you that it's not about your children it's about Jesus there is peace and rest when everything becomes about him nothing else matters nothing in this world will do listen for jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you jesus you koinonia hear me when God chooses to lift you, 
is a choice he made. When God chooses to honor you, it's a choice he made. God chose to speak to us that this year is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And you may say, Apostle, we're just in November. You know how long it takes for God to do something? As long as his will allows. If his will says now, that's how long it will take. You are willing and able. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Because you see, Satan is a seeker of attention. Satan is a seeker of time. He seeks time using all kinds of distractions in your life. And if you do not sustain the ability to set your eyes like a flint, you will never be able to raise your children. You will never be able to pay the bills. You will never... Listen, let me tell you. See, hear me. When God becomes the center of your focus, you keep looking at him and setting your gaze on him. And you will not know when you are rising. You will check and find out that you are not where you used to be again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please hold the hands of someone by your left and by your right. At the center of it all is you that I see. Is you that I see. At the center of it all is you that I see. There is power in your name. Ah. Miracles, miracles happen in your name. As we lift up our voice, as we lift our voice and pray, it's you, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning to pray at about 3 a.m. Now listen, we are going to pray. And when I woke up, I was just walking around. I was not even praying. And the next thing the Lord told me, go on your knees. I just rested on the chair and I was in the spirit. And the strange thing was, I saw the level of speed. Things were unfolding in people's lives, just like a new season. Listen, listen. I want to hear what I'm telling you. I saw people buying vehicles, getting houses, moving. I mean, listen, listen. I, I mean what I'm saying. You know how, how do I put it now? Um, there's this thing in a, when you, you have a, a, any digital device and you are fast forwarding. You can adjust the fast forwarding. Listen to me. I was in the spirit when I saw this. I was watching like a drama. And then, every time seasons are opening, one of the ways, there are many ways God shows me, one, either in a military, military attire, or number two, the page of a book opening. And suddenly, I saw the page of a book opening. Immediately, I saw this. I came back. And that's why the Lord told me to bring this message. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, new seasons always don't look like it but for those who have strength lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit pray Alabarata <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. We are going to pray. And the first prayer point tonight is you are going to judge God faithful. Take your eyes away from whatever has not happened or has happened. And judge him faithful. Lift your voice and say, Lord, you are faithful. You are faithful. Both for the things you have done and the things that look like I'm not faithful. God. Is someone praying? Koinonia judges you faithful. We judge you faithful. Saints of God pray. Mighty ones pray. Those who have been favored by the ancient one pray. Faithful God, ah. hallelujah. Eh, eh, eh. hallelujah, you're the faithful God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up. To be faithful means to possess the quality of consistency. To be faithful means to possess the quality of unbendableness. To be faithful means to possess the quality of integrity, predictability, sameness. And there is a name God is called faithful and true. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I judge you faithful. Shake you are consistent. I trust your faithfulness. Please help those under the anointing. I judge you faithful. I judge you faithful. Consistent. Unchanging. Unbending. The same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. Shake it, Ricketele Bacasha. We pray in the Kipanaga Bacos Shaka Parigi de Bacasi Parusha Larabari in the Kiparuk Shikatai Shikopasakapai. 
You're not a man. You're not a man. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. Number two, there is only one name. There is only one name with power to say. No system can say with power to say. I'm establishing the second prayer point. There is only one name. my salvation shift me to my destiny push me to prophecy lift your voice and pray let my life see your salvation is someone praying God of my salvation and I like a mighty man that you are the God of my the God of my covenant arise like the mighty God that you are God of my lifting God of my rejoicing arise like the mighty man that you are The Bible says salvation belongs to the Lord. It is within his power to make rich. It is within his power to bless. It is within his power to lead. When God points at a man and says, this is my city to lead, there is nothing that can be done under the surface of the earth. Listen to me. Salvation does not just mean salvation from sin and Satan. It is the word soteria. It is also the word sozo. Are we together now? Soteria means to be grafted out into honor. It's a translation, a shift of realms, a shift of dimension, a shift of reality, a shift of results. Soteria. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter 
and said they among the hidden the Lord has done great things for them he says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad then he says turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev it is within his power prayer point number three atmosphere she now says be broken Ray. Holy Spirit Holy Spirit come now heaven open heaven the atmosphere shift chains be broken is open before me but many are the adversaries it is within your power to dislodge the spirits program to hunt destinies the stargazers over the destinies of men it is within your power lift your voice like a priest and pray tonight i command power i command devils spirits look at me Satan will not fold his arms and let you raise godly children Satan will not fold his arms and watch your ministry expand Satan will not fold his arms and watch the wealth of the kingdom come upon you knowing that you have the mindset that promotes Christ Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your marriage Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your family you are going to decree you are going to create I like you to rebuke the devil I command these powers give way, give way, give way give way by the spirit command every force that is not of the Christ over your prophecy over your life over your destiny 
Hallelujah. Now listen, the last prayer point and we're done tonight. One of the ways that we know God is through the dimensions that he has revealed. He is healer. He is lifter. He is restorer. He broke himself into these dimensions. So that the day you need that dimension of him, you can provoke it. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Hey. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your hey, hey, your hey, hey, is your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. One more time. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Lord, hey, why, hey. Lord, hey, why, hey. It's your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. This is what you are saying. Let the reign of restoration come because you are the restorer. Let the, hold on. Let the reign of revival come. Because you are. Let the reign of grace. When you pray, listen. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 15, I think, and verse 32 or so, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high, then any man's desert carus hadaya be turned for a fruitful vine any desert can be turned for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine be turned to a forest but the secret is that shower so when you say lord don't just send help send your name because the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous can run and they are safe the name of the lord is security the name of the Lord is defense. The name of the Lord is speed. The name of the Lord is restoration. The name of the Lord is deliverance. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. You are going to mention every dimension of the name of God that you need in this season to push you into prophecy. If it's restoration, call it. If it's healing, call it. If it's a miracle worker, call it. Lift your voice and Let him restore your joy. Let him restore your prosperity. Let him restore your peace. Though your beginning be small, let your latter end. Shalabateka, 
Sola barakata bakosia salamato. Hallelujah. The names of God. He can be healer. He can be restorer. He can be deliverer. Whatever it is that you need is covered in his name. His covenant name. YHWH Yahweh is his personal name. Hey. Hallelujah. Listen. Please hear me. There is a name of God that can take you from where you are now to where prophecy demands you should be. You must find that name. Find it in prayer. For some of you, it is the lifter. For some of you, it is the restorer. For some of you, it is the deliverer. For some of you, it is the mighty man in battle. For some of you, it is Ebenezer. For some of you, it is El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. For some of you, it is the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Listen, let me add one more prayer. I apologize, our time is gone. You're going to pray, Lord, let nothing in my life steal my joy. Listen to me. Hear me. Soon we're going to be wrapping up Koinonia now, and many of you will return home. Many of you are already, some of our people have left, gone for various reasons. Some are finishing their exams, they're going. And let me tell you something. The world that we live in today, unfortunately, is saddled with all kinds of negative things. From reports from family, health reports, reports of statistics, reports of all kinds of findings. And you are embedded in a system that is full of all of these things. And most of them are complete nonsense. As far as your destiny and God's program is concerned, you will need to trust God for joy. Joy guard joy jealously some of you have lost your joy you walk with gloominess as if life has pressed you down can i tell you something listen to me the joy of the lord is real strength once you sustain joy you will watch your life continue to rise the joy of the lord is what guarantees harvest the joy of the lord is what guarantees finishing I took this Bible and I found out that there was both Genesis and Revelation. And at the end of it, God is still seated on the throne. On no account, in this Bible, kings had to, re, to relinquish their thrones. In this Bible, queens had to relinquish their thrones. In this Bible, nations had to relinquish their territory. But from Genesis to Revelation, there is an ancient one that remains seated. As proof that he is the monarch of the universe. Are we together? So my soul find rest in the fact that there is the name of God. Pray that last prayer and we'll wrap up this session. Lord joy, let there be joy overflowing right now. No room for sadness. No. Attack. No room. Joy. In the joy of the Lord. The joy that He joy. Joy that comes. Joy that is powers. Lord, the joy. the joy Lord no matter what report I get from home your joy remains with me no matter what report I get in my office my joy remains with me no matter what results I see in my business in ministry joy hallelujah I pray for you in the name of Jesus may the revelation of this teaching that I shared with you provide tremendous strength for the journey ahead in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every lie of the devil over your destiny every lie of Satan 
over your life every lie of satan over your home over your family over your children over your finances over your spiritual life i decree and declare that in the name of jesus christ that lie goes down and goes down forever i pray for you for those of you who have lost the strength and the fortitude to continue in ministry in life tonight like the dew of Hammon, I pray let fresh strength be infused upon you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for any and everyone here who is being resisted by Satan by causes by yokes by activities of divination and the plots of evil I declare by the God of heaven I command and establish your liberty this night in the name of Jesus I speak to you by the Spirit of the Living God that everything God has spoken in your life he will cause you to be so aligned that it must come to pass I pray finally for your family I pray for your children I pray for your job I pray for whatever it is you're doing let the anointing and the grace for extraordinary fruitfulness the grace that commands strange favor the grace that commands open door and influence and lifting may that grace rest upon you finally I pray for the eyes of your spirit I pray for your ears in the name that is above all names the clarity and the accuracy of perception as far as your purpose is concerned receive it now thank you heavenly father please everyone stand our time is gone i like to make an altar call right now many of you listen to this teaching and whilst i was teaching the holy ghost was speaking to you and there are many of you here who are saying apostle if you give me an opportunity i want to start afresh with jesus some of you are saying i've given my life to jesus christ but right now i need to rededicate my life sincerely your inside your outside jesus is called the prince of peace many of you online are following from whatever nation of the world i'm going to count one to five and i want you to boldly unashamedly to leave your seat and come stand here aside from overflow three for time's sake i will request that you just move to your projector stand let me call on overflow one and two and the main auditorium and any other overflow please just run be hasty and come and stand here while we clap for them in honor of what god is doing one keep coming don't sit back the lord is speaking to you i'd like you to run god bless you this is a place of love you are greatly loved greatly loved and greatly cherished his presence is where we find strength his presence is where we find life keep coming do not listen to the lie of satan there is always a way out the bible says there is hope for a tree even if it be cut down come come to jesus my dear ones run to him he is the way he is the truth he is life amen if you're coming from outside please come rush quickly god bless you god bless you hallelujah the bible declares that whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away hallelujah thank you so much for the bold step to come and truly surrender your life and your heart to jesus and some of you is a renewal and a rededication just lift your right hand believe that jesus is here i'd like you to set your gaze on him say after me everyone say lord jesus i love you and i believe mean what you say i believe that you are the son of god tonight I receive your life in exchange for mine I receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace and I declare that I reign in life 
I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of the flesh is broken in my life from tonight and forever. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I stretch my hands towards these precious ones. You have declared that whoever comes to you, you will in no wise cast away. We honor you, O God, for drawing these ones. This is what only Jesus can do. And Father, I pray that the grace that keeps will keep them. That they will continue to grow from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. I speak over your lives. May the lines fall for you in pleasant places. And may you have a goodly heritage. The Lord bless you. The Lord preserve you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, for all of you, thank you very much. There is a gentleman waving his hands. Please, all of you, look at me. God bless you. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Follow this gentleman. He will lead you to a group of people right away who will just talk with you. And then you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Please, let's celebrate them. Everyone, this way.